What's going on guys? I'm your host Aaron Lloyd and this is episode 53 of the Creation Grounds. Episode 53 of the Creation Grounds. Before I get into our next marvelous dope guest, I want to encourage you, yes you, to like, share, subscribe, tell people about the podcast that could be inspired, motivated, educated, and all of that. My next guest, Robbie Ramos. Hails from Miami. He is Cuban American and he just booked a fantastic series regular role on Star's upcoming series, Heels, which is wrestling based. Check that out. I know the wrestling fans and non wrestling fans alike will like this show. Check it out. It's slated to come out in summer. In this episode, Robbie talks about his journey. He comes from humble beginnings, very humble beginnings. I think a lot of actors and listeners are really going to be inspired by his story. He comes from sleeping on air mattresses, really going from nothing, pandemic hit. He moves to LA, beginning of 2020, pandemic hits. Wait, wait, let's rewind. He moves to LA, books Snowfall, a recurring on Snowfall, pandemic hits, so he's not able to do all the shooting that he needed to. He did one day when he was supposed to be on there for more days. Book um, did that one episode of Snowfall, decided to move closer to family, was kind of broke, had a lot of anxiety, didn't know what to do, found out that he had a newborn daughter on the way from his wife, and got an audition for what is going to be Stars' heels, and he happened to book it. So I think his journey is just, just a, a, a great example of just like trusting your process, doing your work. And when it's meant to happen for you, it's going to happen for you. Just trust and believe it'll happen for you. It's totally serendipitous the way this happened for him. So check out that story that he has in here. In this episode, he talks about some things that he learned on set. Um, Just he gives some love to the theater and how he works as an actor, some people who he's inspired by, and just some great things are happening in Robbie's career. Make sure to check out this episode. Follow him on social. Follow Heels, which is going to premiere on Stars on social. And enjoy this episode with Robbie Ramos. Let's go! Welcome to another episode of the Creation Grounds with Robbie Ramos joining me for this episode. What's up, Robbie? What's up, dude? It's good seeing you, bro. It's it's been a minute, man. It's been years since I've seen you in person, man. But you, you yeah, are here killing right? it. Shit, it's been years, dude. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. The time uh, is is a crazy thing, bro. I, I don't even know what year we're in dude especially after 2020 you know it's a blur after 2020 man yeah 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 100 uh tell me about the day that you wanted to be an actor i think we, we had lunch like when we were working at the signature and you kind of went into it a little bit but wh- when yeah. did you decide to become an actor um dude so I, I i played baseball since i was five years old and then uh i played all the way through high school varsity baseball and and uh but at somewhere along high school, I, I started to fuck up a little bit, and uh, and I was just kind of like more interested in like you know partying and, and girls and that kind of thing. And my, my grades went down, and my coaches weren't happy, dude, rightfully so. And so um, nothing. I, I finished high school, and then I, I, there was some like JUCO leagues, which is like junior colleges that that I could have played at, you know, like in the middle of Lakeland, Florida, or something small little place and uh i decided not to do that and i just started kind of like trying to figure out what i wanted to do with my life and i remember writing things down man i started to write down my thoughts and that was a big thing for me was writing down my thoughts because up until that point you know your mind your, your thoughts are just in your head somewhere dude they're like this thing that you don't know exactly what it is you're thinking and there's all these dualities in your thoughts and all this shit so i started to write them down and when I started to write them down, I, I started to realize I, you know, some of the things I might go into. I mean, there was psychology was uh, was high up there and things that I wanted to try. I took some psychology courses at Dade, Miami Dade College, which is where I went um, for a couple of years. And, uh, and then I also wanted to try acting. I, I don't know exactly how conscious I was of that my whole life that I wanted to do some sort of performing but i was apparently and when i tried it out man i I loved it dude i fell in love with it and i and i and i felt a certain talent with it that i didn't have in baseball you know Mm -hmm. i I, in baseball was okay you know i was all right but there was guys that were better than me and and they would get away with more shit right (laughs) and and that kind of thing and so i didn't have that kind of leeway dude and baseball was like dude if you're not if you're not putting you're not 
you're not you're not bringing any value to the team you're out you know mm-hmm. and so um so I, I i i realized that with acting i had some some sort of power to do some talent that that was that was uh not the ordinary you know and i and i realized that in my first like one of my first classes we did like a monologue and i remember you know channeling some anger and frustration i had from high school and all the shit i went through and all that through this monologue you know and i remember the the class just kind of being like whoa you know yep. and i was like oh this is the drug that i <laughs> gonna take for the rest of my life dude caught so that bug started, dog. yeah yeah big time so it sounds like you like baseball do you have any other hobbies like other than acting what other hobbies do you kind of have hobbies bro now you know i'm 30 years old and uh i think i don't know dude i want to i want to i've actually been thinking about that in terms of on my off time you know picking up golf or or you know shooting guns or i I don't know dude i want to get into some some wild shit maybe maybe uh you know get a harley or something i don't know i can see you on a harley yeah you can see me on a harley (laughs) yeah Yeah, so i i just been you know like kind of trying to trying to pick that up because so many of my so much time in my 20s i was just thinking about how to get better as an actor and how to make it and shit you know yeah and so i I think i kind of put aside hobbies and that kind of thing and really acting became everything for me it was like uh, you know i i and I, I still consume a lot of podcasts, which is why anytime anyone asks me, man, I come on, bro, and I respect your shit. You've been at this how long, dude? I started this in 2016, I think. 2016. It's been a minute? Yeah. Yeah, yeah remember, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But I love podcasts, dude. So I, 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 um, I consume a lot of, a lot of that, and, and that's basically it, man. I, I you know. Like I said, I'm trying to find some more hobbies, dude. Things that I that I like to do besides acting, you know. I feel that. So you're from you're from Florida, from Miami, correct? Right. Yep. And yep. I, I met you in New York. Uh, we were in a production oh. together. What what's what was that journey like from Florida to to New York? When when did that happen for you? Well, so like I said, man, I started down here at Miami Dade College, uh, just taking courses. I my first play I did here. Uh, at, at that college, I got the lead, bro. My first play ever, I was shitting bricks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember telling the, the director, like, hey, like, after they cast me, I was like, um, so listen, I've never done this before. Uh, and she was like, what do you mean? You've never done, like, college play or something? And I was like, no, 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 I've never done this before. I don't know anything. And and so, and, and I remember her eyes kind of like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> but, but so, so... Um, once I, I, I did a couple, a few plays here, down here in Miami, and I had a teacher named Dana Panaro who, like, guided me through all of that. And she, she, she was a New York actor and teacher here, uh, well, out there in New York. And she had moved down to the South Beach, and I started taking classes with her. And she introduced me to Terry Schreiber Studios out there in New York. I always, uh, you know, I wanted to do stage, so... Instead of going to L.A., I decided to go to New York first. And when I went uh, out there to visit, um, I went to T. Schreiber. I auditioned for the one-year conservatory. And um, and I got in, you know. And and uh, she recommended it highly. Anna did. And um, and so I, I, I went to, to, to New York in uh, 2011, man. 2011, I moved out there. I had just turned 21. And, um, and yeah, man, I just started grinding out there, dude, the one year conservatory. Uh, and then while I was doing the conservatory, I was doing plays outside of the, the conservatory, which some of the teachers weren't happy about, but <laughs> I, I figured like, dude, you know, I, I had to make sure that what I was learning, I was applying it, you know, I feel that. And so, yeah. And it's paid off, man. And, and you like so air mattress like right now we're gonna get into like the exciting things happen in your life now but you came from first of all miami and then you came to new york you were on an air mattress for a while is that correct yeah yeah so i i didn't know anyone in new york like not a soul dude not a family member that does accounting not a family member that does taxes in new york i mean nobody in new york right so let alone in the acting business bro and so uh i did the one year out there and and 
um, I was living in the, in a studio basement. It had like this little, it had, it had a window at the top, <laughs> a small little window at the top, but, but there was always a car there. The landlord's car was always there. So that was my little, nice little view of, of, <laughs> of the outside, bro. And you know, the heater sucked and we were, it was the basement. So there's, you know, it's cold as shit in the winter. And, uh, and then I, I had a, a futon that, that turned into a bed and, and it broke, dude. Damn. You know? So then I had the air mattress there for whenever somebody would come over from Miami or whatever. And I started sleeping on the air mattress, but then they had, it had a hole in it. So I had some leak of, hey, dude, it was, it was but that was, you know, that was a, a good, like, maybe three months four months other than that bro i mean i can't really i can't complain bro you see the thing about it is when you when you're when you're 21 dude and you got those dreams you're willing to fucking deal with anything bro you know mm -hmm. and i think for me like when i think back on it i i didn't even sweat it bro it was just like oh this is the and i had like i said i consumed so much content about acting shit. i had read all these people's journeys and I was like, this is part of the journey, you know, this is paying my dues. So at the time, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't tripping about it, you know? Yeah. I was just kind of like, this is what it is, and, and we're going to deal with it for a little bit. And, and then eventually things got better, you know? I moved in the same building. I moved to a one-bedroom with my, my now wife, and, and things got a little more, you know, steady and kind of stable in some way, you know? So, nice. That's dope, yeah. man. That grit. Um what what's your favorite album you got a favorite album anything that like me that never gets sold to you yeah bro so 808s and heartbeat uh heartbreak kanye 808s and heartbreak kanye uh was i don't know did it come out in 08 or 09 something like that uh probably just graduated high school I was in my feelings dog and that shit <laughs> helped you get through i feel yeah, yeah. <laughs> helped me get through dog so 808s, man, I, I love 808s, yeah, and, and, it, and at the time, it was such a, like, you know, you just didn't hear that from rappers or, or hip-hop artists, and, and Kanye was a, a maverick in that way, you know? Yeah, that's dope, and yeah. so we talked about Grit kind of paying your dues. In your career so far, what's been the most challenging thing for you, and what have you learned from that challenging moment that you can, um, maybe somebody else can apply? Yeah, I think the most challenging thing for me was um, applying the business side of acting uh, because so much of my thing was the artistic side and the creative side. But somewhere maybe around, well, yeah, like 2018 to recent, uh, started to really think about the business side because, um, like I mentioned, I, you know, I'm trying, you know, I've got a family, dude. I, yeah. You have children time, too now, or just a wife? <clears throat> no, yeah, I got a, I got a daughter now. Dude. Oh wow, uh, man. Yeah, no. yeah, which we, we could get into once we start talking about heels because it was, it was just like perfect timing. But uh, at that time, you know, around like 27, 26, 28, I was just, you know, I had my girl out there, and and she was talking about family and. And starting a, a life together, getting married, and all this shit. And I was broke, dude. I didn't, I didn't have any money. I, and then the the, the thing about uh, the business side of acting is that there's no real blueprint, bro. Right. <laughs> you know, we can kind of like you, you'll see on Facebook and on all these like social media, like people uh, promoting their fucking um, their program about how to you know get an agent or how to get, but but in reality. You know, there's a certain level of shit you can do, and then at some point, something's got to break through for you, bro. Either you know someone, or somebody introduces you to somebody, or you meet someone by luck, or they see you doing a play, something like that, right? Some mm -hmm. form of luck has to happen along that way. And um, so for me, it was really like just trying to apply certain things and, and changing my mental state about having this be career and a business you know i have a friend of mine who who i met on on heels and he says that acting isn't it's not a career it's a it's a small business mm -hmm. 
It's true. And you have to look at it that, right, and you have to look at it that way. Alan Maldonado, bro, he, he spit so much game to me about about you know this 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 business and shit. But um, that was one of the things that really stuck with me, and I and and I think when I started to apply that kind of small business mentality to this is when shit started breaking through. I love that. And in Hills, obviously, you booked that. It's on Stars. Um, I don't know. Do you have a date for that? An air date yet? You know. We do. I, I can't say it. Okay. But, it, but it's looking like uh, summer. You know, okay. somewhere around there. All so right. it'll be soon. Um, uh, yeah. Who's your favorite wrestler? Bro, my favorite. So first of all, dog, I'm not a. Huge, <laughs> I wasn't a huge wrestling fan at all. Uh huh. At all, and. And doing the show, I, I I found a love for it. Dude. Um, besides watching all types of documentaries and shit like that, but one of the things about wrestling that I really fuck with is the performance art aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. So coming from theater and shit, the performance art aspect uh, is just uh, it's what's most fascinating to me. Yeah. And one of the one of the one of the he's I mean true wrestling fans are probably gonna fucking kill me, but. <laughs> you know, Andy Kaufman, dude. I, yeah. I fucked so hard with what Andy Kaufman did. And I actually, I spoke to CM Punk because he's on our show. And he blew up about Andy Kaufman. He fucking went on a rant about Andy Kaufman for, for fucking 15 minutes just talking about uh, what he did for the for the sport and for the art of, of, of wrestling. Yeah. Um, and I like that shit. I like that performance art aspect of like, is this real or not? Yeah. And so much of heels, dude, is that, dude. There's like moments where you're like, holy shit, like, are they fighting for real? Are they like, what the fuck's going on? And and those lines get blurred. And that's kind of what I what I really, really, what turns me on about wrestling is that shit. Um, yeah. So I know in wrestling, like, to turn heels, like, kind of like the quote unquote villain. Is that kind of like the premise of heels? Like, it's bad guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, so... Heels is so there's there's two brothers right at, at the center of the story, and um, one of them is a, a heel and one of them is a face, and and the face is kind of like the hero right, mm-hmm. and the heels kind of like the villain, and that then and, and those uh, roles get blurred and they get switched off you know uh, one becomes a vi- a villain and one becomes the hero and. And then off stage, one might really be the the heel, and and off stage, one might really be more of the hero type. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of playing with those um, with those realities within the the sport of of wrestling. Um, so yeah. So you said that it came at a, a a perfect time in your life. How did heels come into your life? What was that yeah, process man. like? Dude, it was twenty twenty uh, uh, July of twenty twenty. Um, I got I got the self tape for it. It was my first self tape of the quarantine. I hadn't gotten any self tapes, uh, and uh, you know I had come back to Miami uh, just to be with family because I didn't know how long this shit was gonna take, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I was down here from LA. I had moved to LA in Jan- so I moved to LA January of 2020. Damn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I moved out there, dude. Uh, and I, uh, I had landed reps before I moved out. So one of the things about, again, the business side of acting, maybe at 21, I would have moved to LA just without any reps, you know, mm-hmm. now, uh, 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 um, at, at 29, I was like, no, I got to go out there with reps, you know, and, and I had a couple friends that knew people out there and they knew reps out there, not actor friends. Okay. It's mm-hmm. this this is one of those things where it's like it's it's fucking it, as an actor you don't know who to ask right. right because you ask your friends and it feels like shit because they're also actors and then you know you're like hey can you introduce me to your manager and usually it's a no you know and, and, mm-hmm. and I get it why because it's like maybe they just started with their reps and they're trying to make it in their own shit and, and then now they're gonna present you know oh uh, you know sign my friend and shit it's like <laughs> yeah. it's Maybe if we had older friends, right? Older actor friends. Then that's a little different. They've been with their agent maybe 10 years. Their agent trusts them. That's a little different. But so at our age, it's a little tougher, you know? But my thing was that uh, I had a producer friend who introduced me to my manager. And then 
my manager introduced me to my agent and and that was all before I moved out to LA. I was I was doing a play down here in Miami and I went and visited LA for a week and I met with the manager and I met with the agent. And I said, hey guys, I'm moving here in January. So January 2020 comes, I move, I book the first thing I, I, I fucking auditioned for out there, which was a, a, a recurring on Snowfall. Mm -hmm. Pandemic hits, we only shoot one day on that shit, of my stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it was supposed to be a three episode arc. I only shot one day and um, dude, I'm in, uh, you know, so I, I come back to Miami in March of that year and I'm like oh it's gonna be two weeks it turns out to be you know, a year I'm still here yeah <laughs> uh, but so but as I'm out here bro I'm getting anxiety I'm fucking going nuts because I don't know what I'm doing dude again I'm 29 uh, I'm married now I'm I'm, I'm broke uh, people are saying jump ship you know I listen to Joey Diaz you know Joey Diaz Aaron the name sounds not personally he's, but I he's a He's a podcaster and a comedian, but he had a, a I, I remember this shit distinctly because he had an episode where he was like, hey, give up that ballet dream and go work at the fucking pharmacy because this shit's over, right? Mm -hmm. And he was in LA at the time, and I remember just getting so much anxiety at night watching that. I'm like, holy shit. And Joey Diaz is like this crazy dude. He, he you know, he's not, he's not really cautious in that way, and he's always been talking about going after your dreams and shit. And now I'm listening to this dude, and I'm like, bro... You know, if he's saying that, how bad can this shit be? So I'm, I'm my anxiety levels through the roof, bro. Mm -hmm. I start, I start working on certain things. Uh, you know, the the Wim Hof method. I start fucking, you know, doing cold therapy. I start breathing and and doing his breathing technique and and writing things down again, dude. It had been a few years I hadn't written things down again, trying to get my thoughts on paper. And then in June, on Father's Day, my my wife surprises me that i'm gonna be a father wow right? <laughs> so at the peak of my anxiety <laughs> and, uh, and so that whole month so i had that whole from june mid-june to mid-july i was just peak anxiety bro like just going nuts about what am i gonna do and um and then i get the self-tape request for heels i send it in i don't think much of it a week later, my my agents like, hey, they really like you. Just be ready because they might do like a Zoom uh, callback. Mm -hmm. Never done a Zoom callback. I'm like, all right, I'll be ready. You know, I got my sides down and all this shit. Everything's memorized. I take a trip to uh, Tennessee because my parents were uh, uh, um, wanted to go see a cabin out there. So we went out there, and uh, the first day I'm there, I get an email about callback. Now, when I look at the callback, it says it's a workout. <laughs> it's not a, a workout. It, there's no acting required, dog, right? Well, oh, that's funny. Uh, it's a workout, and and they want me to do some wrestling shit, like forward rolls and things like that. Now I'm out of shape, bro. Right? <laughs> so I'm so once again, dog, anxiety coming coming up <laughs> and just haunting me, bro. And I was like, oh shit, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, man. So I call the first gym that I find on Google. I'd never been to this area of Tennessee to work out. And the first gym I call, I tell the guy, hey, this is a weird request. Like, but I need like a personal uh, lesson of, uh, you know, I need you to hold the phone while I do this workout. And it's an audition. I'm an actor. I'm this, that, I'm that. It's for a wrestling part. And he said, it's for a what? Now, it's for a, a role, a role on TV. It's a wrestling part. And he said, "I'm a wrestler, dude." Oh my god! And I, and he has a wrestling ring in his fucking gym, dude. Wow. So now I'm like, dude, this seems to be. It's some meant to be. Other shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is some other shit, bro. So I go to this guy's gym. He works me out a little bit. We're doing the the, the warm up, and I'm and he's talking to me. I'm like, dude, we gotta go straight into this shit because I'm out of shape, dog. Mm -hmm. So I got to act like I'm in shape at least, you know? <laughs> so, uh, if you're warming me up and talking to me, I'm going to be dead. So we do the workout. I vomit, dude, directly after. He's, like, recording me. Uh, I finish the workout. I vomit, bro, like projectile. And I wanted to do this whole thing because I'm acting up a score. Yeah, yeah. And so we finish the workout. We do the forward rolls, which were impossible for me. And I had to 
do three in a row. I only did one forward row, and I was like, fuck it, dude. Send that one in. It looks like I know what I'm doing. Just send it in. So at the end of this workout, man, I'm like, yo, so how much do I owe you? And he's like, nah, you're good, bro. Like, I didn't follow my wrestling dream. You're following your dream. I want you to fucking do it. Just just go, dog. Just go get that part. That's love, and bro. So I didn't pay this guy, dog. He was the shit, man. He was the shit. His name was... Fuck, nah, I, I don't even remember his name right now, but I called him when I put, when I booked the part, and I told him, and he was super happy about it. And so that's how I got it, man. And then I waited a month after I sent that tape in. Mm-hmm. So imagine that month, how, how fucking nuts I was going about whether I booked it, and we didn't hear anything, or at least they didn't tell me about it, you know. And so I was just kind of waiting, man, for a month, and then they called me, and they told me I got it. And it was it was amazing, bro. I love that man. I love that story. That that's super like serendipitous and and it is bro. like it's it is. it's crazy. It um, is. Cottonmouth, tell me about the process yeah. of building that character. Like just from the name, I can just imagine like what what this character is gonna be. But like, tell me yeah. about your process of building him and and anything you can share about yeah. um that character. Right, right, right. Well, his name is Diego Cottonmouth, and and what was cool about him, bro, and and this whole process really was. Michael Malley is, is the showrunner, seasoned actor, man. He was from Guts and a bunch of other shit. Yes, dear. Uh, now recently, Snowpiercer, and, and he had a he had a he had showrun another show called uh, Survivor's Remorse, um, that that was produced by LeBron and his people, and that that ran for four seasons, I think. And this is his new baby, and he's showrunning this show, Heels, and and uh, as soon as I got the part, he called me, man. And and he was like, you know, Robbie, where are you from? Because the, the character was originally Mexican. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he's a luchador. You know, he wears a mask. He's got the whole Mexican vibe. And, uh, Mike calls me and he, and he starts kind of getting to know me. And uh, and I tell him I'm Cuban. And he's like, well, Diego's Cuban. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. Thank God, bro. Because now I don't I don't have to fuck with the accent too much. I mean, the, you know. Within our own Latino culture, there's so many different accents and shit. It's like saying Scottish and Irish, <laughs> Scottish and English, like straight up, right? So right. it's no oh shit, you know. I I don't want to be disrespectful to the Mexican culture in any way, and and so when he said that, man, I was like, oh, dope, okay. So I think with TV, a lot of times they try and use who you are, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a shade of who you are. It's less, you know, maybe in a film you might actually work on the accent for whatever amount of time and but so he was really trying to tailor it to me and, and to make it very seamless and so we started working on Diego in that way and and then I dove into wrestling you know because again I, I never watched it I spoke with a wrestler named Conan who was uh he was huge in the 90s dude and I recognize that name Conan yeah Conan yeah he, he, he was Cuban the reason I spoke to him specifically was because he was Cuban and he was playing a luchador, mm-hmm. which again is a very Mexican thing. And uh, and he actually went to Mexico and he, he wrestled there before going to the WWE and and and, and wrestling at the, uh, um, at the WWE. But so in the '90s he was big man and we spoke and he and he was he was really cool about um, just oh you know telling me about what it's like to be a wrestler. Uh, Latino that is Cuban but you're playing like a luchador and everyone thinks you're Mexican and that kind of thing we spoke a bit about that and just kind of the shit he went through and how wild it was in the 90s dude it was a different world you know mm-hmm. uh, and the politics of the game and and all that kind of shit that was really helpful for me um, and then and then besides that it was just showing up man and, and uh, you know Michael Malley was is amazing dude he's like uh He's an actor showrunner, you know. Uh, they say uh, you, you, uh, um, a, a coach's player or a player's coach, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he's he's an actor showrunner in that he knows the plight of the actor, man. He knows our fucking fears, all the shit we go through, and, and he's really always trying to make you feel comfortable on set. And, and it being my first big TV uh, role, it's been you know. It's been uh, it's it's been amazing, dude. It's been amazing, and and uh, and yeah, just adapting to the TV world, though, you know. Yeah. Because we're theater actors, or that's where we started. The TV world is such a different animal. I mean, I know you know you. What were you on recently, dude? I just did uh five days on set of bull. Dope. 
Oh. So, yeah. But you know how it's different. It's dog. super it's different. Whole other, it's a whole other animal, bro. Whole other animal. So it's really just been about adapting to that, man. And uh, trying to stay truthful in the part, you know? Yeah. What, what was the biggest thing for you that you learned on set? Like the difference... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the difference on set um, between like theater. I know the obvious like the cameras, but like it's 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 different. And this I don't know how your set was, but it was like super fast. It's like oh yeah yeah it's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's mechanic. Well, it's especially dude when you come on as a guest star or a co star. It's like I mean they 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 don't even they barely even look at you. You know what I mean it's like it's like get on there and do it dog. Yeah. You know um, so. It's really, for me, it's it's yeah, it's just been because I'm on. Well, I, I was on as a recurring, but I'm in all eight episodes, and 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 they really treated me as a series reg. It was really about like just getting comfortable doing the whole process. You mm-hmm. know? Um, I, I'm you know, there's like certain things that I have because of theater shit where I like I don't want to go up on the line right I want to know my shit and but there's got to be a certain sense of relaxation of if you do go up on your line uh, you do it again you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and there's no panic in in, you know I I think it's really avoiding those moments of panic for me uh, throughout the process I got better at doing that right um and seeing what what other actors that that are seasoned and, and have been doing TV for years, decades, have, uh, do you know? I worked with Mary McCormick, with Chris Bauer. Um, these are actors that I admire, you know, that that are also from the theater. And seeing them work on camera, bro, it's something you gotta experience. It's like it's it's tough to learn unless you're there, dude. And mm-hmm. unless you, the lights on, on you, you know what I mean. The cameras on you, and, and so it's really like something you gotta learn on the job, bro. Yeah, experience, yeah. man. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no substitute for it. You can go to classes, mm-hmm. and you might be a little more prepared, and and you might know. But until you're in there, bro, nah. Yeah. I feel that, man. Um, your story, that's super inspirational, man. Everything kind of fell into place. You got your baby daughter coming. You booked this this gig. You treated like yeah. a series regular. We're speaking that season two is coming your way. It's going to get renewed and all that. I ask all my guests this. When you think of the word creative, who's the person that comes to mind for you and why? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Love that. Yeah. I think that's, that's the first God. time somebody said that actually really yeah i think so Damn. no 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 somebody steven said that steven at he also oh, he said did? That. yeah he said phil too as well i think um yeah philip bro i mean i remember when he passed yeah i was i was looking to do an internship at, at labyrinth mm-hmm. and my girl woke me up in the morning and she was like you know philip's dead and i was like oh god bro i never met him and but he was one of the reasons why labyrinth was always like somewhere i wanted to be at you know besides steven you know steven i think is one of if not the best playwright that we have right now Mm -hmm. especially for for our community Mm -hmm. Uh, he's amazing dog he's so philip steven those guys are are giants bro but Philip, to me as an actor, is like you know, he's uh, he's something to shoot for, bro. Agreed. Dope, yeah. man. Um, how can people connect with you? How can people follow Heels? Um, the when it airs, do you have the Instagram, the website, all that kind of good stuff? Yeah. So my my socials is uh, at the Robbie Ramos, and that's on Twitter, Instagram, um, Heels stars i think is their instagram handle um we should be coming out with a little teaser trailer within the next month or so so y'all can be on the lookout for that bro and and yeah i'm excited about the show man i think it's gonna be dope and i think wrestling fans will fuck with it but also people who aren't wrestling fans will be able to see uh what i see which is that it's an artistic medium yeah you know 
wrestling wrestling is, is an artistic medium, bro. So, yeah, man. Robbie Ramos. And yes, sir. Much love and blessings, bro. Thank you, G. I appreciate you having me on, bro. I know you've been doing this for a minute, and, and I respect the shit out of it, bro. I, I'm just trying to start my own little podcast thing, and, and uh, this is a shit, man.